This is Ujmal Gandhi from Spatial Thoughts. Welcome to the next tutorial in our series where we are learning how to use X-Array to efficiently work with remote sensing data sets. X-Array is a powerful Python package that allows you to work with raster data very efficiently and allows you to even do parallel computing out of the box. One of the common operations that you may have to do when working with raster data is to extract statistics over different polygons. This operation is also called zonal statistics where we have a vector layer of polygons and for each polygon we want to compute the sum statistics over all the pixels from a raster layer. Now X-ray can handle rasters very efficiently, but here we need to work with vector data. So we need to take our vector layer and rasterize it as an X-ray data set, and then we can overlay both this X-ray data sets and efficiently extract the statistics from them. In this video, I'm going to walk you through this tutorial. If you want to follow along, you can get the link to this tutorial from the video description. We also have the Colab notebook that is available here, so you can run it on the Colab platform where you will be able to see and interact with the results. Let's start our tutorial. To rasterize our vector layer, we have a couple of options. There is a package called GeoCube, which allows you to take a GeoPandas layer and turn this into an X-ray dataset of the same dimensions as your raster. So that's a very easy and straightforward way that you can use a vector data along with an X-ray dataset. I will be using GeoCube for this tutorial, but there is a newer package called XVEC, which can do the same thing, but it offers many multiple options where you can use different packages for the rasterization. We'll be working with a raster data of precipitation. This comes from chirps and we'll take this gridded raster data and we'll compute what was the average rainfall in each of the county in one of the states in the US. For the vector layer, we'll be using the data from US Census which is the polygon for each county in the US. We start by installing the required packages. The Colab environment comes with many packages pre-installed, including X-Ray, but it doesn't come with Rio X-Ray, which we'll need for reading geospatial rasters, GeoCube for converting our GeoPandas layer into X-Ray dataset, and finally, X-Ray Spatial, which allows us to do the zonal statistics. Once we have installed it, we import it. I mean, to download the data, we create two folders. One is a data folder where we download the data and an output folder where we we'll see save the zonal statistics. We've provided with the data layers here. You can download it from the URL here. The chirps data is the raster data and the US county polygons comes in as a shapefile. Once we download it, we start reading the data. So first we use GeoPandas to read the vector data and to see the full data frame. So this is a geo data frame of all the, the counties in the US. This has got all the counties in the US. So we apply a filter and say we only want the polygons for the state of California. Once we have a filter, we make a copy of this data frame. This allows us to modify this filtered copy where we can add new columns to it. One of the things that you'll run into is if you look at the California data frame and do info on that, you'll see that all the columns came in as the type object. Some of them have null values or kind of mixed values, and that's why they came in as object type. And this is not suitable for our downstream analysis where we need at least one column which we can use as a unique integer IDs that we can rasterize it and then use that to join our zonal statistics. We'll be using this geo ID column. This is what contains the unique IDs for each of the polygons. So for this column, we're going to turn this into an integer data type. We're going to use this S type function. This is a pandas function that allows you to convert data types and we'll just save it override the geo ID column with the new data type. And now if I just look at the info again, you'll say that this ID column is now turned into an integer. So that's great. Now we need to read our raster data. So we are using the Rio X-ray. We open the raster data set. We say mask and scale true. This deals with the no data and masks them accordingly. So we'll read the no data value that is stored in the metadata and set those pixel values to NANs. So you can see when we run this here, this values come in as NAN. That's great. So when we compute the statistics, those values are ignored from our analysis. Next, we read our raster data set using Rio X-ray. We open the data set. We specify mask and scale true. This is particularly useful option when you're reading data using Rio X-Ray. If your data set has no data values and they are correctly encoded in the metadata, this option will set those pixel values to no data and which is land values here. And this ensures that once we compute the statistics, these pixels are ignored as no data and they're not counted with their value. I think in this data set they come in as minus 9999. So if you do not set this, those pixel value will be set to minus 9999 and they'll affect the overall statistics. 
We also clip the raster. This is a global raster, so we clip it to the region that we're interested in. We already have the data frame that we filtered to California, so we just take its geometry and clip it. You'll see we get this X-ray data set with one band and this many pixels in X and Y dimensions. One of the things that you will need to do is this is a three-dimensional data set. We have X and Y pixels and we have one band. We for extracting data, we need a two-dimensional data. So we need to turn this into a two-dimensional data. This one is easy because we just have one band. So we just select out the band and we'll get a two-dimensional data. So we use the, the cell function. This is an X-ray function that allows to select a particular value by its name. So we say select the band one. And now if we see it, we'll get two-dimensional array. Let's just visualize it. Uh, this one is an X-ray data set. So we can just do plot dot I am show and it will allow us to see the, what the data looks like. So this looks nice. We have this gridded precipitation data that is clipped to the region of interest. We have the precipitation values in millimeters of pain. And now what we want to do is we want to overlay the counties on top of this and compute what is the average rainfall within each county. For doing this, we also need to turn our GeoPandas polygons into our data set. So we use the GeoCube function make GeoCube, where we say take our GeoData frame, which is the California DF, take the unique values that we have in the GeoID column. So these we convert it to integers. So each polygon will be rasterized with the value of that particular GeoID. And we can optionally specify what's the, the resolution and projection of the raster that we want. We just, since we want to overlay it with the precipitation data, we can just say like precipitation. So it'll take the, the exact dimensions and resolutions of the precipitation X-ray data set and create a similar data set for us. Let's run this. And now you'll see that this also creates a new X-ray data set with the same X and Y dimensions. And we have our band called GeoID, which has the, the pixel values rasterized as the GeoID. So now we have these two X-ray data sets of the same dimension and we can now overlay and extract the statistics. We'll be using the Zola stats function from the X-ray spatial library. Here we say we need the, the zones are this rasterized polygon that we just created and we have the, the raster data which is the precipitation value that comes from chirps and we want to compute the zone statistics. When we run this you'll get a geo data frame as the output and you get multiple statistics. So you can see there's an output data frame has this column called zone, which is the, the geo ID column. So it says this is the zone ID for each of the zone where we have computed the statistics. And these are the different statistics that it computes by default. Now this is great, but we, this is not useful for any downstream analysis. We need to join this with our original vector layer. And we will ideally want a shape file with a new column called whatever mean value of precipitation that we can save. So we need to join this results with our original geo data frame. For that, we need a common column. We already have the zone column, which is the geo ID, so we can join them. We just need to rename this zone to geo ID back so that we can join this with our original data layer. So we create this GeoID column, which is uh, copying the zone column, and we convert it to int uh, data type so that we can join this with our original uh, data frame. And now we just use the GeoPandas merge function, where we'll say take the, the, the data frame that was uh, that came out of the zonal statistics. We just need the mean value. We can remove the other columns and then we can join it on this GeoID column. Now, when you see the result, you'll see that we have our original data layer with this new column appended at the end, which is the mean precipitation that was extracted from the raster. And now we can visualize the result. This is a GeoPandas data frame. So we can just use a matplotlib and use the plot function to visualize the data set. The pro tip is even after working with matplotlib for many years, I still find figuring out these options pretty cumbersome. So nowadays I just use the AI assistance. The Colab environment has this Gemini assistant built in if you enable it, or you can just use ChatGPT to just say, I need to create a plot this kind of parameters or this kind of legend, and you'll be able to get this variables quite easily. So here's the map that we could create for each of the counties. This was the, the average precipitation for the year 2021.
And finally, we just save our result as a geo package. This is the geo package file that we want to create. And we just say take the join layer and save it to the output file. The output file will go into the output folder here. And if you want to analyze it locally, you can just download it to your computer. Hope this tutorial was helpful and you learned some new tricks to work with X-Ray. Do try this out and let me know your feedback by adding a comment down below and stay tuned for more X-Ray tutorials. Thank you.